F-150 price decreases, mm -hmm. which some are calling catastrophic. Some are saying Ford can't pay to get rid of these. That's not how I see this whatsoever. I think this is a very smart move by Ford to make sure that F-150 Lightnings don't collect in yards. It's also great. It's fantastic if you are if you haven't bought a Lightning yet. And it's awful if you've bought a Lightning and aren't going to keep it for, you know, 10 or 15 years or at least five or six years. So I'm really thrilled that I leased because right now I'm $38,000 upside down, meaning I paid $110 for my Lightning. And with these price decreases, it's cost, causing the wholesale to be willing to pay me about 70 well, not about $71,729. I've lost roughly a little over $38,000 in what, six months of ownership? At least it's not $10,000 a month thus far. So that's what's going on. We've got these major price to cut for prices being cut on the Lightning. And we're going to be talking about, you know, is this going to be consistent throughout all the models? what this means, what the results are. So the pro model, the old price 59,974 down to 49,995, decrease in 16.64% That's in a lot. the price. That's a lot. Do you want to read through these while I get the rest of the show ready? Yeah. So the XLT uh, 311A, uh, the old price is 64,000 roughly to almost uh, 55,000, so it's 14.7% uh, uh, less. That's a lot, that big numbers. Uh, that, that's a good, uh, a good decrease. <laughs> uh, new buyers will be lucky, but the, the old one like you uh, will suffer. Yeah, uh, the XLT uh, 312A uh, gone from uh, 68,000 to almost 60,000. So it's a 12%. And uh, the XLT uh, extended range from the, the 312A, uh, 78,000 to roughly 70, so it's around 11% uh, um, uh, decrease. So it went from 78,800 to 69,995, Yeah. so down 11%. But I'm happy to see that with the Lariat and the Platinum, the bigger model, it decreased a little bit less because uh, this one will hurt, <laughs> I guess. So the Lariat uh, 510A, uh, 76,000 uh, to uh, 70,000 roughly, 9%. And the Lariat extended, extended range, uh, around around uh, 86,000 to uh, now seven, uh, 77,000 so it's uh, 77,500 yeah less and than the 10%. platinum extended range 98,074 to 91,995 that's mm -hmm. a decrease of 6% in Canada the platinum's gone down $15,000 why did Ford do this well Ford did this because they don't want these vehicles collecting on yards causing dealers to pay interest, maybe getting dealers to be reluctant about joining the Ford plan. Because remember, if you if you want to sell electric vehicles in 2024 as a Ford dealer, you're going to need to put in, I believe it's two fast chargers. It's a minimum. You have other chargers that you have to put in as well, but you're going to have to have at least two fast chargers available 24-7. This is going to make the Ford network for charging absolutely incredible. And it's amazing. Ford figured out how to make the dealers pay for it. It's about 1. You know, 1.2 US or 1.5 Canadian dollars per dealer. So smart, Ford. If you're Ford stock, come on. Buy, I, I bought Ford stock because I'm like, wow, a business that can make other businesses force other businesses to pay millions on vehicles they might pay a whole lot of interest on just the same because they were starting to collect these. How smart of Ford. So I like the idea of buying Ford stock right now. Jim Farley, I think, is really, really, really smart. People are all saying that Elon Musk is a genius. Well, this is a genius move. Get dealers to pay, and but in fairness, it's you know it's not just a one-way street. Jim Farley has also had these drop these prices, which is good because dealers do not want to collect, you know what is this? And basically a hundred thousand dollar platinum F one fifty. Dealers don't want to pay ten percent interest on that. In the past, 
we'd often have F-150s that would sit around for, you know, eight, nine, 10 months, but they were $50,000 pickups. So the interest on them with interest rates that were way lower was so much less than what it is today. So thankfully Ford for dealers, forcing them to put in chargers as consumers, buyers, lovers of vehicles, we're all gonna benefit. Genius move, but they have dropped the prices on it so we don't collect them because we already had a collection of them. And as it is, Ford's pulled a recall and the recall that they've put on could have vehicles, F-150 Lightnings, not all of them, but some of them sit on lots for months. Can't even deliver it to the person that ordered it. So I think, I bet the dealer is gonna pay interest on that. So anyways, when we talk about Ford price increases or decreases, I want everyone to know that, you know, the Maverick went up in price and the dealer profit margins did not go up. And it actually makes it so it's a whole lot harder to sell over overprice because less people get interested in a product as the price goes up. That's sort of what they're, you know, the, the Fed, the Federal Reserve is hoping that with prices increase, they thought, well, naturally there's inflation, people will stop spending and they didn't stop spending. So then they didn't understand human psychology. Prices went up. They should have known human psychology. We wanted things. We were locked up for two years. We wanted to spend money. We wanted to have we wanted to have fun and we had a bit of savings spent up. So generally people spent, we're gonna spend money no matter what. So then they increased interest rates and people continued buying stuff. So the Federal Reserve, not thinking of human psychology, not being psychologists or philosophers, just basically said, well, we're looking to look at like, like a bunch of nerds. Let's look at only the data and only consider, you know, one aspect. They looked at the data and say, hey, our interest rate increases haven't caused people to stop spending yet. So then they had the bright idea to continue and continue and continue to increase interest rates. And really, we just hadn't gotten the being pent up and forced into doing nothing for two years. We hadn't gotten that crappy situation out of our systems. So we're still in a spending mood, but now we're not in a spending mood anymore. Things are slowing down and the Federal Reserve, Canada and the US are continuing to uh, increase interest rates, even though signs are saying that the economy is slowing. And if these people were people people, they'd call up construction companies and say, how are your contracts going? And generally it's not, I'm booked for the next year and a half. Many construction companies were booked for one to two years. And even though there's a huge shortage in the trades, the demand, they're not booked out nearly as far out anymore. And that worries me. Inflation, sorry, interest rate increases, which is just when they in increase interest rates, they're making us pay for the fact that they printed out money, the bank, the whole group of, you know, bankers and governments. And not only are we paying for what they did, now we're really going to pay because if they don't bring down these interest rates soon, repos are going to go up. They're really going to go up. And that's one topic I wanted to cover. Repos is what we're covering, up, covering on the last part of this episode. And Marie's going to give repo tips. And that's how we're going to conclude the last 10 minutes of the show. But I just quickly want to point out that electric vehicles, we don't want to be forced these vehicles. I'm tired of them being, and I think we should all be tired of them being called zero emission vehicles. The F-150, we love it. It's an amazing vehicle. It's the fastest vehicle we've ever had. And we've had a lot of fast vehicles. It's unbelievably comfortable, but it's not zero emissions. It's 131 kilowatt battery and we use hydroelectricity here recharging the battery on our vehicles truly isn't causing any well the damage to the environment has already been done so it is like free electricity essentially like a harmless electricity now that the harm's done it's done but the 131 kilowatt battery in a lightning or even worse the hummer the hummer ev is horrible for the environment. They destroyed, what is that, like 230 kilowatts, destroyed the environment, a bit of human, essentially almost human enslavement to get all the materials for that. And for what, call it a zero emissions vehicle? I don't understand why there's a push to these vehicles when the batteries are gonna last roughly 15 years, 15 to 20 years. So for many, many, many parts of the world, that 
creating this vehicle, the overall pollution create for creating these electric vehicles will be worse than just buying your Ford Maverick hybrid. Small battery, 5.5 liters per 100 kilometers, you know, let's say on average you're getting about 43 4 to 45 miles per gallon is so much better for the environment than these all electrics. But CAFE rules, government rules, don't hate Ford because they're going for an electric push. Don't hate Dodge for getting rid of the V8 and go doing an electric push. Government rules, the CAFE rules, basically if, you're, if you don't have a 50 mile per gallon fleet average, you get taxed by the government. So government laws are forcing these electric vehicles on us and they're not good for the environment. So I don't understand why I haven't figured out fully yet. I've got inklings to why we're being pushed electric vehicles. You know, income tax was supposed to be just for World War II. It was supposed to, it was promised to be temporary. And was income tax temporary? No. So do governments always act in the best interest of regular people? Absolutely not. We get pushed sugar just so that we can work our whole lives and when it comes to retirement, all our money goes into paying the hospital and not having good health and not having as long of a life as we should because we got told sugar was fine for us our whole life. So governments aren't out for your best interest. I don't think when they're pushing us electric vehicles, I think electric vehicles are a bit of the sugar high in, they're like the sugar high in the sweets that we get convinced are good for us when really the only people that are profiting from that are major corporations and really BlackRock and Vanguard literally own, because they own stocks and majority stocks, so they're the owners of all the food companies, they're the owners of hospitals, they're the ones benefiting. And who, who works? You know, governments work for the people that pay them. And who do governments work for? The corporations. They work for BlackRock and Vanguard because all their sponsorship money, how do you get elected to be a politician? You collect money. That's what runs your campaign. Who's giving the money? It's not us. We're insignificant. The pe people who are paying into the political system as actual people. The money almost all comes from corporate donations. It's not directly given. You have to give it to a third party that then gives it to the political party. But things are going to continue to be unbelievably messed up and bad for regular people until we get, until we make it illegal for corporations to have any of their money go anywhere near our elected officials. Because otherwise, it's the corporations that are electing them. So we're going to be continued to be told that meat is bad for us. Eggs, according to the new food pyramid, pyramid is bad for us. And guess what's considered really good for us? Sh cereal. Just pure sugar. Apparently cereal is super healthy and way healthier than eggs. I'm not sure. What You've got a baby in your stomach. What do you think is better to eat? Cereal or eggs? eggs? That's right. Definitely. Since you've been pregnant. Because the cereal, it's rare that you have really good cereal and it costs a lot. So oh, people made, just bought sugar cereal. Even if, and even if you don't get sugar cereal, it's made from wheat and the wheat has pesticides on it. So you only started eating eggs once you were pregnant. She's like, yeah, hey, I got to do the responsible thing. <laughs> so that's my... And because I'm more uh, 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 hungry now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So electric vehicles to lessen climate change is a load of crap. I love electric vehicles. I'm so happy I can choose to have one. I don't want to be forced one. But when it comes down to it, when you think about all the pesticides that governments allowed on our bread, our food, our fruits, our vegetables, and it's pesticides are all over them, horrible for our health. When you think of the stop signs in locations that make no sense, that's pollution from braking, brake dust. They never talk about brake dust pollution. Brake dust pollution is horrible. They don't do anything about it. They don't do anything about jets, private jets. They go up in the sky for 50 minutes. They use a year's fuel for your average American. What an average American uses in fuel in their vehicle for one year, a jet, private jet carrying one or two people, one businessman, 50 minutes, it's a year. And do they do anything about trying to control people's private jet use? No, you've got YouTubers going on a private jet every single day. Yay for them, but horrible for the environment. Government's not doing anything, so I don't want to be forced an electric vehicle. 
that's my rant. I'm going to move on. I'm sorry, everyone, that you had to deal with me. 